This is like the UK's equivalent of a burger bun or a bat, except it's not reserved for burgers. This is intended just for breakfast meats. So this is what you would use for your bacon roll, for your link sausage roll, for your square sausage roll. Important things about these rolls is that they're enriched with some kind of fat. I've used butter and milk in this recipe, but lard is traditional. You could easily sub that out for vegan or vegetarian alternatives if you would rather use a, a nut butter or soy milk or some kind of neutral fat like a vegetable oil to replace the fat content that's coming from the butter. Go ahead and do that because the main characteristics of this roll are a floured surface. You know, it should have like a rough leathery top. We've made that using semolina and just a dusting of flour. A fluffy, tender crumb, which I'll show you now, so check this out. It should be like pulling apart and softness. Number one like criteria for this is it should be soft as a cloud. Mm. 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 It's midnight where I am now. I'm stuffing my face with one. But Tomorrow morning, I'm going to fill these up and serve them to the family for breakfast. They're excellent. Enjoy. Okay, let's make these things. Start with 500 grams of plain flour. I'm using one with a protein content of around 10%. It was the cheapest I could find. To that, we're going to add yeast, salt, butter, and a combination of warm water and milk. Like I said, this is basic stuff. Lots of Scottish cooking relies on this principle of taking really simple ingredients and mastering them to produce something delicious and moorish and filling. Combine your dry ingredients in a large bowl and get ready to melt your butter. So we're gonna chuck that in a small pan, get it up to a temperature where it's warm and melted, but not hot. We're gonna pour this directly into our mix and we don't want it hot enough that it will harm our yeast. Stir your yeast in with your liquids. That should also be sort of lukewarm from the warm water, even though you've poured cold milk in there. Make a little well, pour it in, stir to combine just enough so that it starts to thicken. We're gonna add the butter into this gloopy mixture before we make a full dough. Pour it on in there, it can go on top of that, and because it's pre-mixed a little bit, it's unlikely to do as much harm to the yeast, even if it was a bit hot. Stir thoroughly to combine now right into a full dough. You can get it shaggy, we're gonna knead this rather than fold it, so don't worry about getting it completely smooth with your spoon, scrape off anything extra, and get ready to dump this out onto the table for kneading. So just pour it from the bowl directly onto a surface. There's a lot of fat and it's quite stiff. Chances are you will not need extra flour on the table, but if you're uncomfortable working with slightly sticky doughs, put a bit down there. I'm gonna just keep kneading and kneading and kneading to get to a result where it's smooth and elastic. If you've seen my other videos, my tip is to keep the downward side facing down throughout. Pick up the dough and move it, rotate it, push away from you and fold it back into the center. Eventually, even doughs with a lot of enrichment like this one will come together into a cohesive mass, so long as their hydration is under, I would say, around 75%, 80%. So we push, we stretch, we fold. At this point, you can see the gluten is starting to really develop in our plain flour. We can get it out to a good distance before we pull it back. And when we do, it looks smooth on top. So we're just gonna keep going and going. We know that things are starting to come together. So perseverance will probably pay off in this case. And after eight or nine minutes, it's at the point where we can start pulling it tight into a ball. So where you can see I'm doing that here, I simply get my hands and drag it towards me, putting pressure down and in and I rotate the ball, pull it towards me, putting pressure down and in. We want to stretch that top skin that's starting to have tension on it underneath the dough ball. Once you're here, we're ready to let it rise. Give it about an hour and a half. We've used instant yeast. It's quite warm where I am. That means we'll get to this doubled size quite quickly. If you were using a sourdough or less yeast or it was colder, you would need to give it longer. But you can see how much it's increased. You can see on the bottom of the dough, we've got these little air pimples and pockets forming. That's an indication that fermenting's happening nicely. And it's retaining a dent as I prod it here. So these are all good signs that the fermentation is going as we need to, and we can move on to shaping. Shaping's dead straightforward. I've said before, I like to work with logs rather than cutting sections out of a circle. So that's what I've done here. I've split it into two logs. I've made six roughly even dough balls. If you want to be precise, you can. All you'd need to do is get a scale out and measure them out evenly. 
we're going to work them a little bit more as you can see here pulling the edges in towards the middle and going around in a circle before flipping it over and rolling it in our hands to form a ball these should all be as spherical as you can get away with and we just do that same technique as the large dough ball on a smaller scale for each bun we're using those scooped hands to pull down and in towards us, rotating the ball so that the shape we create is going to be close to a sphere and working through it to build tension. If you see little air pockets while you're doing this, you can just pop them by pulling, pinching and twisting. I would resist the temptation to try and push them in to pop them because you'll leave your dough misshapen. So I always pull out just until they pop and the air can escape. Once you've finished the process, you'll have this. Six lovely, evenly sized rolls ready to go in the oven. I'm going to put them in a bacon tray with a high side and a heavy base. These are from Marks and Spencers. They've served me well for years. They're non-stick. Importantly, this one is just slightly larger than the six dough balls once they're put inside it. That means that as they expand, they can touch both each other, filling in the gaps, and touch the side of our pan, which will give them a chance to form a beautiful golden crust where they've been in contact with the metal. Cover them up, put them somewhere warm for their final rise. That's another hour to an hour and a half. And when you're done, they should have doubled in size again. Off camera, I've given these a dusting of semolina on the top. That's going to give a coarse texture, that leathery texture we talked about at the start. And traditionally as well, these have some flour on the top. That'll vary from brand to brand, and some people like them more flowery than others. But when they're done, you should end up with something that looks just like this. They're cooked in a really hot oven, about 230 degrees Celsius for just 15 minutes. That way, they have a browned top. A browned base but this lovely pale halo around the middle that you can get your fingers into to pull these apart before you fill them with bacon and sausage and ketchup or brown sauce give this recipe a try let me know how you get on and enjoy